the wonderful presence of God. Bless the Lord. I have uh, got to be in fellowship with Brother Danny and his family through the years, and I just appreciate the bond that God has given us through that time, and to know each other and to know who he is through all of us, and that through all of that time that God has never changed. Amen. And for that, I just thank the Lord Amen. for who he is. Yes. If you want to follow along, I want to read a passage to leave with you to think about and to write into your heart out of the 8th chapter of the book of John. And we'll begin in that chapter, starting at the first verse. It says there in John chapter 8, verse 1, Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had sat her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto him, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground, and they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest even unto the last. And when Jesus was left alone, and the woman was standing in the midst, when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none at the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Have no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Then Jesus spake again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Amen. Father, I just ask right now that you bless this word, that this word of encouragement go out to each one, Lord, that it be an encouragement to them and help unto them, that we write this upon our hearts, that it be a help unto all of us. God, and I pray that you just get me out of the way for this moment in time. That this all be for your glory, Lord, for I'm here as a willing vessel, God, to do your will. And I just pray that every word be of you and none of us, God, for we are here that you be magnified. Bless and you. I just praise you for this opportunity, Lord. And we take not for granted your word or the hour that you've given to give it, Lord. And we ask all these things in the wonderful and mighty name of Jesus. And the church said, Amen, amen and amen. amen. I begin to think about this scripture and I know that... We've heard this probably if we've been in church for any amount of time and how that we know that if we apply this in the context of knowing that we don't have the right to cast our own judgment upon others in the context of knowing that we have our own things going on in our own life. But when I begin to study upon this in a little bit more depth, God began to show me something in my heart that just began to floor me in a greater way. And I begin to think about this in the world that we live in and the great need that the world has and such peril that they have for needing Jesus Bless in the Lord. day that we live in. My friend, if you look up and down the road, there's no shortage of people that need Christ in their life today. And if you look in our school systems and in our government and in our workplaces, there's no shortage of needs for people to see Jesus in, the, in their lives today. And I begin to think about this now, God... How in the world are we going to make a difference in people when we are being pushed away so much and being able to express ourselves? And God, how are we going to be able to show people in the way that we live when we have so many things coming against the way that we can take a stand for the way that we believe and the way that we show openly how we believe? And God gave me the scripture and I said, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? What are you trying to show me? And it begins to come out at verse 12 and it says, I am the light of the world. And he that shall follow me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. 
And now begin to think about the context of this conviction that the woman was under here. And how that all the accusers were trying to bring light to the sin that was amongst this. But the more that they begin to bring light amongst the sin, they begin to bring in the presence of the Savior in the situation. And I'm glad to know that when you begin to bring in the Savior in the situation, that when you put in the light of God in a situation, that there is no power of darkness that can prevail in that situation. Aren't you glad that when Jesus stepped in on the scene in your life, that no more darkness could prevail anymore? I'm glad to say today that when I have evaluated all the sin that was going to hold me down in my life, when all the accusers that tried to come against me in my past to hold me down in my life, that when Jesus came, that there was no more stones that could come to destroy me and who I was. And that when I finally accepted Him in my life, there was nobody else left standing but He and me. And I'm living today just with He and me. I don't have any other accusers living with me today. I don't have anything else standing there with me telling me that I have to live in my past. I'm glad to know that I've got me and Jesus. I'm standing in the light of God. I'm walking with great clarity. I know what I am. I know what I've got. In that light is great joy. I can see clearly my happiness. In that light is great truth. I don't have to be deceived. I don't have to be led astray. I don't have to be told wrong. I know in whom I believe. It'll keep me led in the right and not led into wrong. I'm glad I know that when my accusers try to come for me, that I'm standing in the light of God. My friend, if you want to lead your loved ones to the light of God, stand in the truth and walk with Jesus. You don't have to do any great big show to show them that Jesus is in your life. Just walk in the light of God and they'll see something good in you. Walk in the love that doesn't want to throw stones at somebody and they'll see love inside of your heart. What I wouldn't have gave in the light of my sin. Go to see somebody that would have loved me in spite of my faults. But I'm glad that when I found some people that had the love of God in them that loved me in spite of my faults. They to a Savior that I've never known before. And if we're going to make an impact as a church that we're living today, we better walk in that same love. And when people have accusers all around them today, when they have a world all around them today that's telling them that they've got to live this way, aren't you glad you can take them the light of God and show them a different way? I'm glad to know today that I can show them something different. Amen. Hallelujah. There's something that I had not seen before in this. There is a little bit of ignoring that we've got to do when the enemy is trying to attack us. You don't have to listen to every accuser that comes your way. No matter what the enemy will try to do to try to provoke you into trying to come against what he's working in his plan against you, that doesn't mean you have to listen to everything that the enemy will do. That's right. Sometimes you just need to hold your peace and let God work His perfect plan. Amen. Amen. Because I found that when I was in my most darkest place, that the things that helped me find God the greatest were in people that loved me and held their peace about my problems. Could it have been real easy for them to walk up to me and tell me, you need to do this. You need to get your act together. You need to fix this. You need to get all these things together. Yeah, it had been real easy for them to do that to me. But had they, it would have probably provoked a different kind of spirit inside of my life. But I'm glad that they held their peace and showed me Jesus first. Because let me tell you something. When you get Jesus first in your life, it takes care of everything else that's going on. Amen. I talk in a different way than I used to before I knew Him. I lead a different life now than I used to before I knew Him. And everything else that's going on in my life today, it's different than what it used to be before I knew Him. If we can do anything good in this day, let's get people to Jesus so that they can find a new way of living. And we can worry about how they fix everything else after they found Jesus. Amen. 
So many times we get caught up in wanting to pick up the stones to fix everything. But listen, if we worry about that, we beat people down before they ever find Jesus. That's true. That's true. And we get people so scared of having to fix their problems before they find Christ, they'll never find the church house. That's true. They're so afraid to come to church because of having to fix their problems without Jesus. And they have no notion of knowing that they can have a change in here before they have to change everything out there. Amen. And when I begin to see this in, this in such depth, God began to show me that what began to change here was the outside circumstances began to be removed. And at the end of this, what really caused the change to be different was that at the end it was just the woman and Jesus. That every external circumstance had to be removed outside of this. Now I want to talk about our personal things for a moment. Is that okay? When we have things going on in our life that keep us from being able to go forward in our calling. That keep us from being able to go forward in our prosperity. In our happiness. In our joy. When those accusers try to come along and say, oh you're not good enough. You're not good enough. You're not called. You're not able. You're not able to do this. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't praise Him. You shouldn't sing that song. You shouldn't testify. When you've got your accusers, those little voices in your mind telling you you shouldn't do those things for God, I'm here to tell you something right now. That's the voice of the enemy trying to deceive you out of your blessing. But I'm here to tell you when you walk in the light, those accusers that come your way, you need to start ignoring what tries to keep you from your blessing. There's somebody that needs to hear your testimony. There's somebody that needs to hear your song. There's somebody that needs to see you in the house of God. There's somebody at your house that needs to see you smile. There's somebody that needs to hear your laughter. There's somebody that needs to see your joy. Why? Because they need the light of God. Yes, amen. Amen. Right. They need the light of God. It's dark out there. Bless the Lord. It's dark out there. Yeah. If we don't think it's dark out there, Turn on the television. Yeah. See how random and sporadic and spontaneous and horrible that the world has came to in its violence. See how terrible and evil that the enemy has become against yes. God's people. Amen. The enemy does not care how he operates towards God's people anymore. And I thought about that so much and it's, we've got to get to the point where we get bold enough where when we hear these things that tell us we're not good enough, that we start ignoring it and draw it on the ground. So that's what I'm doing. When I hear in my head that I'm not good enough, I rebuke that. Yes. Amen. 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 Yes. And say, if I'm not good enough, you get a stone and throw it at me. Amen. Amen. You know what the scripture said? No weapon formed against you can prosper. Amen. Amen. No weapon formed Amen. against you. That the enemy could form to prosper against you could ever win. You know what that tells me? All those words that try to tell me I'm not good enough will never amount to a thing. So that means every service I come in, I can serve it no matter what I hear in my mind. Every opportunity that I have, no matter how bad that I feel, no matter how much my body says, not today, Brother Jared, I can still get up and praise him anyway. Because why? Somebody in the moment you're in needs the light of God. Yes. Why is it that the enemy works so hard against us? Because he's trying to keep somebody from the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. That's right. He's trying to keep somebody from the kingdom. He's trying to keep your children, your grandchildren from the kingdom of heaven. Amen. He's trying to keep you distracted by the stones of life. He's trying to keep you worried about your accusers. Instead of having acceptance and happiness in your life. And to be honest with you, when I look back at my life, I had 11 years of drug addiction. And I look back on that and I say, God, most people that have that long of a time with a struggle would have never made it. Most people that would have went through something like that would have been another tragedy. Would have been an obituary. Would have been a funeral. Would have already given up their children. But God, you saw fit Bless you, Lord. for me not to be stoned. 
You saw fit for me to see the light. And I could stand here today and worry about the stones flying around me. But I've decided to live the rest of my life ignoring my accuser. Because I've got life to live and only one to get one to do. I've only got one life here. And while I've got life left to live, I'm going to ignore my accuser. Because I've already made up my mind. I put my past behind me. I've accepted the salvation that's been given to me. And I'm 11 years drug free today. And I'm happy to say that there's still hope for those that are in darkness. If you'll show them the light, there's still hope for people that need deliverance. If you'll show them the light. But you've got to be the one that decides to ignore your accuser. You've got to be the one that gets up every day and chooses to live and be happy anyway. You've got to be the one that gets in here and says, God, I'm going to praise you. Whether we got five or five hundred, I'm going to praise you anyway. Well, I'm going to start preaching in here right now. I'm going to tell you when it's at the end of the day and nobody else is around. Is it still just as sweet when nobody else is with you? It's long as you've got Jesus with you. I say it's still worth it because it's still worth all what he did for me. Hallelujah. Think about this. He said, neither do I condemn thee. He said, who's left here? She said, nobody. Nobody's left here. Neither do I condemn you. We are here today because he has forgiven our condemnation. And it is not a right. It is a privilege Amen. 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 And I don't want to take for granted the privilege that it gives me. Yes. I'm free because it is a privilege. Amen. By the sacrifice of Christ, it is a privilege yes. to be free. And I'm thankful for the privilege to be free from my sin. Amen. It is my right to rebuke my enemy because of my privilege to be free. And we should be humbled by the privilege of being free because what he did for us was certainly not without pain. What Jesus did for us was certainly without scars. What he did for us was certainly without a consequence. What he did for us was not without an ultimate sacrifice. And for that, I have to remind myself every day, it is a privilege that I'm able to walk each day and say, God, I'm glad I'm no longer addicted. God, I'm glad I no longer cuss. God, I'm glad I no longer live day to day begging just to get another dollar for another fix. God, I'm glad I'm not having my legacy be left behind as something I'm so wretched as that. God, I'm glad that I am so much happier today than I was before. God, I'm thankful that you not only saved me, but you gave me a brand new life. God, you didn't just leave me where you found me, but you gave me something new. You didn't just you didn't just redeem me, but you put me in a new place. You made me a new creature. You gave me blessings that I could never comprehend. We take for granted so often, come in and out of the house of God, and we're walking in and not even not even thanking Him half the time because we're taking advantage of it because we think it's a right, but it's a privilege, my friend, because of what He did for us. And we not need to stand here today and pretend like we got no reason to praise him. It's a privilege to be here. It's a privilege to praise Him. It's a privilege to be thankful. It's a privilege to remember what Jesus did for us. And if we can't come to tears over the sacrifice of Christ, we need to come back to the fall. Amen. 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 That wasn't in the notes. That's for free. Bless you. I'll leave this with you and I'll try to hush. Anyway. What we have today freed us from our past and empowered us to make decisions in the moment we're in. So today you have a choice. You have a choice. And the scripture said walk in the light. 
as he is in the light. He said, light and darkness will not fellowship together. That means that in your life, you have a decision. Now, some days when we choose to be happy, they're not going to be good days. Some days, things are going to happen that are going to be hard. And we're not going to have control over what happens. But can we still choose to walk in the light? Yes, we can. Sometimes things are going to happen that make us question our existence. Sometimes things are going to happen that make us question our ability. They're going to make us question our Christianity. But does that mean that we have to listen to our accuser, which is Satan? No. We don't have to listen to him no matter how much we go through. The word said rejoice concerning your tribulation. Think about that. What it was really saying is, learn to be happy and content when you're going through things. Why is that? Because you already have the victory, even when you're walking in a trial. You have already won, even when you're going through something. We don't always have the answers. We don't always have everything figured out. But God is still God, and we're on the winning side. Amen. Amen. So here's what I leave you with. When you go out of here and you forget about me and you forget about this message, I want you to remember something. Stop listening to your accusers. When the enemy tries to tell you you're not good enough to do what you do for God, send that out of your mind. Because it's time you let other people be impacted by what you Amen. do for the kingdom of heaven. Amen. You've only got one life here. To do the best that you can with what you have left. And while you have the ability and capability to do it, do the best you can with what you've got. And here's the best part about this. This woman was not only forgiven, she was also known <coughs> by Jesus. Amen. The other part of that is she was known by Jesus. He not only forgave her, he already knew about her. He already knows your situation. When you are pressed against the wall and you feel like that you've got all these things coming against you in your mind and your emotions, He already knows your situation. And there is no temptation taken you such as that you're not able to bear it, but that He would make a way of escape. What is that telling us? This is the way that God gave it to me about three weeks ago. And I felt like he gave it to me just so I could understand it. If he's given us a weight to carry, then obviously we are strong enough to be able to manage it. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been given it to carry. And there is some reason for us to bear it. We may not understand it, but this we do know. All things are for His glory. Amen. We may not understand why we were given it. Jesus, even before His sacrifice was to come, He said, Father, if it be Thy will, let this pass from me. Yeah. Nevertheless, not my will, but Yours be yes. done. We may not understand why we face everything we do, but we do know that if it's in His will, it's for His glory. And if we can just learn to dismiss our accusers, we can be encouraged to know that whatever it is we're enduring, if we can stand in it and be content and show people God's truth, His love, and that we're able to still go on, that impact means more than we think it does. He sure does. There are people that have done went on to be with the Lord. That all the stories I heard of what they went through, poverty, having little or nothing. That doesn't mean very much to people that have a lot today. But if they were put in that same circumstance, they would learn to appreciate it more, right? Amen. Amen. And I begin to think about that. It's like, Lord... We have a generation that is not connected with the fact 
that it could be so much worse than it is. So I feel like that it's our responsibility as elders and as shepherds to those coming up to tell them our story and prepare them for the things to come in their life. If life still lingers on, we've got a work to do in them. Just like the ones that left it for us. Left that light for us. That we could see the way. We have to shine the light to others that they find their way to. Amen. My heart is thrilled to tell you today that you have just enough light inside of your life that you can lead people to Christ to. Yeah. Because if He is in you and He is in me, then we all have the light to lead others to Him. Amen. Through what we do, what we say, the impact we leave behind, that is what we do. And we as the body can do that everywhere we go. Yes. This is just a filling station. We're here to get encouraged. The real work begins when you leave this place. Amen. When you get out there and you're at home and you're around your family, you're at your job, you're at places where people need to hear about Jesus, that's where it matters to show that you're ignoring Amen. what could bring you down. Amen. So in that figurative thinking about it like that, when your enemy's trying to speak to you, why don't you draw on the ground and let him know it's not going to bring you down? Amen. Why don't you tell the enemy, you've got no place with me. If you've got a place with me, why don't you try to form a weapon against me? It won't prosper anyway. He who is without sin, why don't you throw it? But we're so afraid of the enemy sometimes, we dare to run away before we try to fight the enemy. But I'm here to tell you, your prayers mean more than you think they do. Yes. Amen. You, he said, only believe. You've got to learn to ignore what comes against you so that you can walk in the brightest light that you have. Because yeah. there are people that need to see the way. Because I love being in great buildings like this. I love being in churches. I love fellowshipping with God's people. But the building that this world sees today is not here. It's here. Amen. That's right. Amen. This is the new church. Yeah. And we've got to show that the best way we know how. Amen. That's and true. if we can show it to them here, then we can lead them to here. Yeah. Where they can continue to be grown and cultivated and, and encouraged. But they're afraid to come here. So we've got to do the work in here and go out there and show them the way. So ignore your accuser. Your enemies don't have any hold on you. You are called. You are meant to do this. You are meant to be here. You are meant to be happy and have a good time and do exactly what you're meant to do. Yes. And God loves you and wants you to show that love to other people. And I love you and appreciate you and pray that God continue to bless this place. It's been a blessing to be here and I thank you for the opportunity. Bless you.